Hi there, I'm Sophie. If you don't know me or if you're new here, I'm an artist. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia and I don't know. I just scribble a lot. I make a lot of stuff. I have very cute dogs. I like looking at flowers and well, that's about it. <laughs> Enjoy. Have you done another rainbow? Yep. Come and have it. I'm going off mine. Hi. Welcome to a new video. I hope you've been well. Today I want to talk about art supplies. <laughs> my art supplies and the secret behind my art supplies which to be honest isn't really a secret. I'm pretty transparent about it. On the front of my Instagram page I have a highlights reel uh, where I mention some of my favourite materials and on my website in the FAQ section I have a section on my favourite materials and I've made multiple TikToks and that sort of thing. But if you haven't seen those, I want to talk about them now and I want to go into more in depth about the materials, the tools I use and um, the difference between cheap and like artist quality. Yeah, we're going to dive into some of that kind of stuff. But yeah, let's go now there to my desk so this i want to introduce you to my backgrounds which i i actually just finished this one yesterday this was my old one which i love i use these for setting up photos so when i have a new product a new print new stickers i will arrange them here and take a photo and I feel like it's just very me there's scribbles there's flowers color explosion sometimes I do use like a white background as well just I'll just get a big piece of white watercolor paper or something like that and use that as my background yeah they they're literally just drawings I did large drawings I did on um, watercolor paper but yeah this is a scrap piece of paper that my friend Mel gave to me. This is a printout um, of an older drawing of hers that she never got to finishing, so she gave this to me. I am very thrifty. I love to use what I have. I have managed in my life to gather a bunch of free stuff, and I'm so grateful for that. Let's talk about sketchbooks. So, I'm passionate about sketchbooks. I love sketchbooks. I draw in sketchbooks all the time. It's one of my main things that I make my art in. But in saying that, the sketchbook paper quality isn't that important to me because I love messiness. I love it when paper crinkles. I love when it bleeds through. I like the challenge of working with those obstacles. Um, I feel like it pushes the creativity that sort of thing. So the sketchbooks I use, <laughs> they're the same sketchbooks I have been using for the last three years. This book, it's the same brand um, I've covered in stickers. I got it from a little shop in Melbourne. So if you're based in Melbourne, go there. It's called Zeta Florence. It's in Fitzroy. And it's just called Notebook. And I think it's made by them specifically. It's got no other branding besides that. But basically, it's cheap. It's fairly cheap. It's like 20 bucks. Um, the paper, these are, okay, so these are the things that are important to me when it comes to a sketchbook. Brand, all that kind of stuff, I couldn't really care less. Um, I want the paper to be just off-white, slightly off-white. I don't want stark beaming white in your face make you go blind beam explosion of white. Just a step back, a slightly more muted white. Even cream, I love cream sketchbook pages. I like it when sketchbooks are not wire bound. Yeah, not wire bound. I like it when they're bound with a spy. I don't know what the technical things are, but I like when it's like this, you know. Um, because I like to draw across the spread. So when there's, uh, when it's bound by wires, just like impacts my time, you know, <laughs> and you know what? 
I don't like using amazing quality paper sketchbooks because the pressure is too much, it's too much pressure. So I stick with a fairly cheap sketchbook with with the main uh, points in mind that I can't go without, that I've discovered that I need in a sketchbook. Simple. So it, it takes a bit of trial and error to find the right sketchbook for you. If you are someone that wants to make beautiful finished artworks in your sketchbook, perhaps you might want to go for a higher quality sketchbook with um, watercolour paper or like paper that's made for wet media. Um, I love this sketchbook. I love it. I love it. I'm nearly finished actually. I'm about a third of the way to go. I've got a third to go. So I'm going to probably keep using these ones for a little longer. So that's sketchbook talk. Done. <laughs> okay, here's something that's interesting. Uh, glass dip pens or dip pens in general. My videos on TikTok went viral <laughs> with these glass dip pens uh, last year. I've got a video with millions of views and that freaks me out. But anyway, um, glass dip pens have been really fun and they look expensive, they look fancy, but you can get them for really cheap. Um, I got these from an array of different locations around the internet and I literally just googled glass dip pen um, and aren't they so beautiful they're incredibly beautiful to look at I have an obsession with transparent and glass items so um, when I discovered what glass dip pens were I was all over it all over it you can see this one's a bit chipped um, and they do break. This one's also, it's got a broken bum. Yeah, so the prices on these ones have ranged from these ones here, these lumpy ones. These one cost me about $2.50, or maybe it was $4. Anyway, it was under $10 Australian dollars. This one was the most expensive. It was like close to $30, I guess. And these ones I can't remember, but they were in the middle somewhere. You can see that they've got two different nibs. One's like a, a fatter one and the grooves are sort of in a straight line. Whereas this one, which one is not broken, is long and twisted. So the long and twisted ones actually hold more ink because they um, the ink sits inside these grooves and as you draw it falls out falls out streams out it's nice but they they're both they both hold so much ink it's amazing glass dip pens who knew they're magical like unicorns so this this is one of my favorite things i i love playing with glass dip pens i love how they look i love how they draw um they're freaking beautiful they're just a beautiful art piece i would really love to meet a glass blower who can make a custom one of these for me one day. Um, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Here's an example of some of the drawings that I've done with glass dip pens. I love it. I love it. And they do they do take practice. Um, but 10 out of 10 glass dip pens. I've also got these uh, dip pens. Um, so this one here is a lovely one from uh, Zeta Florence, which is the same place that I got my sketchbook from, um, and that's a really nice one to use. It's a very fine lined one. Um, as you can see, the tip at the end is really thin, so the the narrower, the more narrow the tip, the narrower your line work is. And this is a super cheap one that I just got from a like a garage sale. Some guy had a huge box of them, and I grabbed a couple. Um, super cheap uh they're they're fine they work great uh really fun to use similar to glass dip pens they just work the same literally all you do is you take the pen you dip it in the ink um and this little gap here fills up with ink and as you draw do 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 and then as as the ink empties you just have to dip it again so you can get them really cheap 
This one was a bit fancier. Um, uh, that was a bit more expensive. But really, they do the same thing. They really do do the same thing. Um, and yeah, I just keep them in a silly little jar. I could probably be more, I could probably afford to be a little more gentle with them, but they're pretty good. They're pretty sturdy. I mean, I've had some fatalities, <laughs> of course. There you go, glass dip pens. They're a favorite of mine for sure. Now let's move on to the subject of inks. I love ink. If, if I had to choose one art medium to use for the rest of my life, it would be ink. <laughs> I just love the pigment. I love the reactions and the weird colors and stuff that goes on with ink. So much fun. Now I get my inks from anywhere and everywhere. Whatever piques my interest, I'll grab it. The Eco Line ones are really nice. I got them from the art shop. They're beautiful. Um, the triangle ones, they were an expensive one, but I won a little voucher to Zeta Florence and I bought those two inks with those. Um, these ones in this uh, hexagon little glass jar and the little square ones to the left, they're a Japanese calligraphy slash fountain pen ink and they're actually my favorite ones to paint with because they do all these really cool like reactions, all these colors come out and it's really fun. This is Lousy Ink which is a local Australian maker who uses Epson printer inks to make a whole new ink and that's a really fun one plus you're supporting a small local business. <laughs> these ones I got a few years ago when I was in Malaysia and they were mega cheap and I'm like kicking myself I wish I had bought more of them because they're really good and I've used up a lot of them. I really don't like inks that have shellac in them because shellac makes them really thick. It's made out of beetles. Uh, it makes the ink really thick. It doesn't work so well with um, dip pens because yeah they're too thick to run uh, to stream freely through the nibs. <laughs> Windsor & Newton we just saw and these ones are another fountain pen ink um, by Quink Ink and Quink Ink is what originally got me into ink and uh, it does all these really cool yeah color reactions and I don't know how to explain it but it does cool things and I love it so painting with ink that is not designed to be painted with like not artist ink I love I love I love painting with that kind of ink. Um, yeah, so fountain pen ink. Uh, and this one's the mega cheap one. I think I just got from a $2 shop, uh, just like a Japanese sumi ink. And I sometimes mix it with a little bit of water and leave it in this jar just to make it last a bit longer. Um, yeah, that's my ink. Ink's the best. I love it. And yeah, you can get it pretty cheap. Next, pencils. So the pencils I use are Prismacolor pencils and they are an expensive pencil. It's like two to three dollars per pencil. But me being Thrifty Queen, I um, bought the big box of them. It was like, and I can't even remember, 68 colors or something. When there was a shop closing down an art shop closing down they had a 50% off sale and I called up and I was like you hold one of those boxes for me and I went running and I got I got it so um still still pretty pricey even at 50% off but oh my goodness they are my favorite they are so pigmented and waxy and creamy just beautiful I sharpen them using a, a little blade usually that way I can make the nib nice and long and um, yeah I feel I feel like I have better control um, it's easier and yeah the nib breaks less but when you know I when you use a normal pencil sharpener it, I, I found that it breaks more so anyway that's pencils I love them Pencils are one of my favorite things ever. Next, brushes. I keep my brushes in this thistle vase that I found at an op shop. It's nice, that, that is all. My brushes come from 
everywhere. They are a mixture of freebies that I got while I was working as an art, uh, a life drawing teacher. Crappy ones that I got from op shops or the news agents. Uh, there are a few nice ones. But the nice ones that I have purchased myself have usually been on special or heavily discounted or um, in their final run, like they're discontinuing them or something. I really make sure I get my brushes um, when they're on special or when they're cheap because brushes are expensive and um, I use plenty of super cheap ones, massively cheap kind of crappy ones that work well for me. I do think that um, skill is involved when using a brush. You can't just get a really fancy expensive brush and then all of a sudden be an expert artist. It takes skill, it takes practice. I know no one likes to hear the word practice, <laughs> but seriously, practice makes progress and the more you progress, the more practice you do, the better you'll be, the more you'll be able to adapt to all sorts of different brushes. I like using non-conventional brushes as well. Um, you may have seen, if you're a Patreon of mine or on my TikTok or whatever, that I have a couple of videos about using unconventional tools as brushes and some of those things have included sticks, mossy sticks, lavender, rosemary sprigs, like whatever, you name it. And they're always a really fun challenge as well. Um, but let's talk about some of my favorites. I don't really use all of these. I mean, I definitely have favorites and that changes a lot of the time as well. I'll go in and out of what favorites are at the time. Good, good words, Sophie. So at the moment, I'm really loving this one. Um, it's the main one I've been using a lot over the last couple of years. So it's a Royal and Lang Nickel brand. Um, and it's a size zero, so it's a line brush. So it's really good for getting nice, smooth, crisp lines. I got this for really cheap at Spotlight, which if you're not an Aussie, I don't know if Spotlight exists in other places, I have no idea, but um, Spotlight's like a big craft store, like an everything craft store. It's got fabric and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they often have really good uh, specials on their brushes and other art supplies. So when I um, get their newsletter saying brushes are 40% off, I'm like running, getting some cheap brushes or topping up on these ones because um, I lose them all the time. So that's a favorite of mine. These are the big ones that I use for um, like spreading paint on, my, on a bigger canvas or a bigger piece of wood. And this one is a Montmartre. Um, and this one is a Renoir Wide Flow. So this is quite a nice brush, um, which I got um, as a discount. But the Montmartre one is also fine. Like, it does lose bristles every so often, but it covers, it covers the canvas just fine. So <laughs> this is a really lovely, beautiful paintbrush that I have had for years. Um, Supreme Taclon by Neef. Uh, it's a size six um, and it is so lovely for ink, um, really big, swooshy, thick, uh, round lines. This is great for like a large scale ink painting, which I don't really do. So I don't really use this brush very much, but it's nice. And it's one of the brushes that I lashed out on and spent quite a bit of money on. Neef is... Um, pretty good brand. They use synthetics. I don't like using brushes. They use real hair. Um, I'm just like that. I like animals and I don't know. I haven't put any research into how they get the animal hair. Maybe it's fine, but I just haven't done the research. So to be safe, I don't use them. I just use soft synthetics. And I mainly use like watercolor, gouache and inks. So I go for soft, soft synthetic brushes mainly because they work best for me. I do have a couple of brushes in here from when I used to do oil painting and oil paint brushes are usually 
a little more coarse, a little more rough. Um, but like, seriously, it depends on what you want. Here's one that I have loved very much um, with the <laughs> sticky tape holding it together. I'm pretty sure this is a Neef as well. Yep, size... And I, I can't read that, but it would be like zero or size one or something. Another little line brush one. I don't really use it anymore, but um, the, bris the bristles are all like broken and that sort of thing. But I do hold on to these ones to play with texture, um, to play with unpredictability. Um, I really like doing that sort of thing. So even if it is a crappy paintbrush, it's fun to play with that sort of deal. This is a fun one. Look at that. Look at this guy. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> um, that's a, that one doesn't even have a brand. I reckon I just got it for real cheap at like a newsagent or something like that. I don't know. You know, sometimes you just can't afford the big fancy things. And when you're kind of living paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck as an artist, sometimes you need to stoop. <laughs> <laughs> and get the crappier brand stuff which is co completely fine and with enough skill and practice and like work behind you you can make it work just do what you want to do and have fun that's my motto have fun and experiment <laughs> now I want to talk about gouache watercolor and acrylic gouache Paint? Yeah, let's start with watercolour. Um, so this is my favourite watercolour set. It's Winsor & Newton. It's beautiful. I think it's better than student quality. I can't remember. So this was really, really generously gifted to me by um, my friend Mel, who is also Maud of Moss Forest. If you don't follow her, you need to because the storytelling alone, the artwork, Mm, she is a wonder. So Mel gifted me this uh, watercolour set. It's very loved. I like leaving my colours around because with watercolour you can reactivate, which is great. So it's a, a good thing because you don't really waste much. Like all of this, I just apply a little bit of water and it'll become paint again. It's amazing. And these little um, trays, um, you can easily replace them or um, as I do... I have some of these, you, you can buy these little um, things, what are they called, these little vial, vials, um, and you can fill up the little trays if you want. This uh, Windsor & Newton is actually a really nice brand, high quality brand. The, this box of paint is, I don't know, $100, $200, I'll check, I'll check how much it is, so I'll put it here. Um, at the time of filming. So yeah, I understand that it's not the cheapest thing, but um, with watercolour and gouache and that sort of thing, this is where I like to spend my money on some nice paint, some nice-ish paint, because it means it's light fast, it means it'll live longer, higher quality, I'll be able to sell it, and I'll be able to sell it knowing that it's going to live a life and that it's not going to disintegrate in five ten years time this is another set uh, also gifted to me by mel um, it is winsor and newton again um, these ones are just slightly higher quality they're so beautiful yeah so that's another really beautiful watercolor set so i used to do markets rose street market every weekend for a couple of years and there's a huge benefit to that because I'm around artists all the time. I met this amazing watercolour maker, Alchemical Arts, and they gave me a couple of sets of watercolours to play with. So these are actually handcrafted watercolour paints. He would go out and harvest the minerals and whatever things that you need to make watercolours. Um, and then come home and make the watercolors. How beautiful is this little box? So these were a gift. These were a gift in exchange for uh, a video on YouTube. My goodness, they are beautiful. It feels like painting with the earth. I'm very fortunate that I am able to make these connections with other artists and be able to collaborate with them. These are gouache. So these 
there was an original like five I can't remember which colors they were um, that were gifted to me by a big group of friends um, for a birthday a couple of years ago during the pandemic um, and they surprised me with a small set of gouache for my birthday and I've since then bought more little tubes um, but yes gouache is expensive like I said before this is something that I'm happy to kind of lash out on a little bit so even though I had five four or five gifted to me originally I've gone ahead and purchased much more since um, and I've used up multiple yellows and multiple whites and that sort of thing so um yeah this, this is really beautiful quality gouache I love using this gouache it's so thick and creamy and pigmented it's lovely so big favorite of mine I don't get the chance to use the gouache as much these days because I have recently discovered um, acrylic gouache which is quite new to me still this is I'm gonna move this aside a little bit more so this is what my acrylic gouache lives in um, in this handy dandy box that I found at a vintage store I was actually contacted by the art box and they gifted me a couple of these Turner acrylic gouache for an exchange for a, a reel and I was like oh I don't know about these colors I don't like them blah 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 um, but then I started painting with it and I discovered I really really like acrylic gouache acrylic gouache is like gouache it looks like gouache it paints like gouache but it doesn't reactivate when you paint over it dry um, which is great because I um, like if I ever make a mistake or if there's if I have a change of mind in color I will go back over it um, and you know paint over it and it's fine all standy so I've moved on to using a Holbein brand I use this a lot of the time instead of red to mix other colors um, but yeah Holbein has been really nice I really love the quality um, I usually get this bigger these bigger sized ones I have discovered that the art shop there's a sh there's an art shop called the art shop here in Melbourne they sell them for the cheapest so if you're in Melbourne google the art shop they're the ones but yeah I, I love to take this little box with me whenever I go out on plein air so that's another one that can be quite pricey the acrylic wash and a lot of people use jelly gouache um, which is also really really nice but I, f I feel like the quality is just one step up with this one um, and I found it much easier to paint using the acrylic the Holbein acrylic gouache over the Himi jelly gouache this is another really fun uh, medium that I've been playing with uh, it's a graphite um, which you just use kind of like watercolor you wet your brush boom 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 and paint with it so here's a little painting I did with the um, graphite so I love the effect I love the texture it's kind of like ink but it has the slight shimmer that graphite has it's a bit of a challenge to play with but I really loved that um, I love challenging myself. I love trying new mediums all the time. And this was on special at the art shop <laughs> in Melbourne. These are some watercolors that I found at an op shop. I'm super thrifty. I, I, I always look in the art supply sections of op shops or thrift stores. Sometimes I come across goodies like this. Yeah, so they're really fun. So these are actually, I think um handmade i'm not really sure they don't have any information i think this is the exact same one yeah yeah there's no information in them but they uh they've been really fun cost me like i don't know two dollars a tin which was great fine so whenever you go into an op shop or a thrift store or wherever have a look in the art section you might find a diamond next thing i want to talk about uh my watercolor palettes paint palettes 
I love collecting paint palettes from op shops, vintage shops, um, or making my own. So let me show you a couple of my favorite ones. Okay, I'm a very messy artist <laughs> and I hardly ever wash my palettes after I finish using them. Don't judge me. So this is the first palette I ever made um, when I uh, did a short uh, ceramics course, a hand building course back in 2018 or 19. Um, I went in being like, I need a paint palette and I've never seen them anywhere else. And that's what I did. I made this paint palette. You can sit your paintbrush here. It's a sun. And since then I've made a few more of these sun shaped ones. This one is my favorite one. I use this a lot. Um, it's super cute. I love the size. Um, it's made out of stoneware clay and I do have my own kiln. I make my own ceramics. Um, I don't really post about them online very much, but I do sell them at markets a lot. So I do sell um, palettes generally. Um, there's another big half moon shaped one um, that I made. I love this shape because um, I can set my piece of paper underneath it um, or to the side and it kind of doesn't get in the way. So for instance, if I was painting something in my sketchbook, I could sit here and have the paint palette to the side like this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So that's um, a favorite of mine, whoops, making my own palettes. Um, when you can make it, why not make it? <laughs> so this is uh, some uh, watercolor paint that I have that I can reactivate whenever I want to use it. So it just sort of lives on this palette that I made. And here's another one um, that I haven't cleaned. <laughs> um, so not only do I make my own palettes, I find stuff that work as palettes at the op shop. I haven't used these ones yet, but I've got these little dishes that for little coffee mugs, see, a dollar each. Um, those are an op shop. Um, there's a glass one that I found at an op shop. So these I use as paper. This, these ones I have cleaned like a good girl. Um, so yeah, I like to find interesting things at op shops interesting glassware um, is always fun and it's super cheap like a dollar each you know I highly recommend going into op shops um, and f you might find some interesting watercolors you might find some interesting uh, palettes they they can also make the your photo look interesting of your when you take your you know your photo of your artwork that you finished Having something interesting like this is cool, I think. So, um, yeah, so that's the secret to my artist palettes. Um, okay, let's talk about markers and other random things. <laughs> so these are Tumbos. Um, they have a brush pen on one side and like a little nib on the other side. These are really fun. You can basically paint with them um, and you can use water with them as well, which I've never done, but that looks fun. Uh, so there's a select few colors there. Now these are quite pricey. I bought a bunch of them on special and I was also given a bunch, again, my friend Mel. Um, wow, I had I haven't realized how much of this stuff has actually been gifted to me by my friends. Um, get yourself some art friends, my goodness. What do I have in here? Let's zoom out a little bit. Here's just some random pens that I pick up from different shops along the way. Um, Muji. Um, yeah, a few, quite a few from Muji, um, which are quite cheap. This one's from Daiso. This is a really fun one to play with. It's a double line one. Um, this is an art line, which is really nice. I discovered these recently. I don't know why, but I didn't know that this sort of thing existed. So it's basically like you can do line work and then 
once the line work is dry, give it a few minutes, you can go over with watercolour and it doesn't bleed. Um, hallelujah. How did I not know about this earlier? They're really good. Um, here's some more Muji gel pens. I just like playing with these sort of ones in my sketchbook. You can get them really cheap. If it's just for sketchbook drawing, go cheap. It's all good. Tech, uh, connector pens. I've got tons of these connectables as well. Um, childhood. These are like super childhood. <laughs> um, love. I love connector pens. They're really fun for uh, big chunky line work in your sketchbook and to bring a pop of color. I, I love playing with these. Oh, here's some uh, fountain pen which I have filled with some ink. This is a really crappy fountain pen. I got it for a dollar fifty, I think. Um, and it doesn't work very well. Like sometimes the ink doesn't come out of it or sometimes too much ink comes out all at once. Um, and again, this is something that I would just play with in my sketchbook. I think using art supplies that are difficult to use forces you to really experiment and to push through to make something interesting um, to figure out how it's how it's best used and it helps your skills grow so if you experiment with these sort of things your your skills are built because you're problem solving and figuring out how to use things um, here's, an, here's a fun pencil from Muji it's like a um, mechanical pencil but it's really thick so yeah, collect random stuff. Collect random pens that you find. <laughs> because they're interesting. And they're fun to play with. Here's something else that I got the other day just for fun. To fuel my childhood loves. I used to love um, these twist crayons when I was a kid. I would go through mountains of them. I used to draw so much with these in primary school. This isn't the brand I used to get. I can't remember the brand I used to get, but I found these um, at Big W, I think it was. And I've actually been having a lot of fun with them. They're, I mean, they're not artist quality, obviously. They're for kids. Um, but they that is a fun way to fill up your sketchbook really quick with a bunch of color. <laughs> so they've been fun. Um, that's a great cheap one. Uh, yeah, artwork for yourself. On the topic of um, pastels and crayons, I've, this is a recent purchase of mine, Karen Dash. Um, these are really nice. These are quality pastels. Um, they're really beautiful. So it's a Neo Color 2. So it's a solid wax soluble pastel um, and you can use these with water as well and play with uh, with that. Um, I've used them on a wooden board, I'll show you. So this is a wooden board that I painted on. Um, first layer was acrylic gouache and then I went over with some of these Caran uh pastels and some Prismacolor pencils as well. So they're really good for multimedia use. The pigment is just phenomenal. I love it. But they are very expensive. <laughs> they are very expensive and I want more colors. If you're going to make an artwork and sell it and claim it to be, you know, archival quality or just like high quality, color fast, you want to make sure you're using proper art quality stuff rather than kids quality stuff. Um, this is fun to play with. This is fun to fill your sketchbook with drawings with. Um, this is still super fun. And look how big they are. They're actually really long. Um, so they, they will last a long time usually, unless you're like me and you press like super hard. The couple of drawings that I've done with these, I love them. I did a sketchbook drawing recently just to sort of figure out what they're all about. Um, so here is the sketchbook page I did using these Caran d'Ache uh, crayons um, and look at the pigment it's lovely so this is a page that I had recent, uh, originally painted 
with watercolors but then I also tried out the you can kind of see through here I did a bit of a scribble and then I used paint and um, use water I mean to turn it into paint so that's really fun all the options um, but I just really liked using them like solid um, yeah the pigments oh delish let's talk about paper uh, paper is one thing that I haven't mastered and I don't know if I've really actually ever mastered anything but yeah paper is something that I'm always trying new brands I have picked up the cheap ones with weird texture I don't know if you can see but it's got like weird mesh <laughs> This one is terrible to paint on. But if you're experimenting, if you're playing, it could work. So I've tried, I tried everything, you know. Some I like, some I don't like. Something like this, which I think I found at an op shop maybe. It's just like card. I think this was like a photo album um, that I did uh, life drawings in for a while. This was a really nice one for pencil work really fun pencils this would be really nice with neo color so that's a prismacolor pencil uh, life drawing um again op shops you find weird stuff that actually work really well this is one that i used for a while this is a quite a cheap brand araldo di polo watercolor pad 300 gsm it's not great but it's good it's good enough. The texture's nice, nice and thick. The, I did have a problem with uh, inks with this one, like they it did bleed slightly and there was uh, variation in pad to pad. So I bought like three at the same time, exactly the same pad, but two of them bled really badly with ink and one of them was fine. And it it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I think that happens with watercolor paper sometimes. There might not there might just be some sort of discrepancy in the coating of whatever they use to coat with it. No, yeah, I'm smart. I don't know much. I don't know much, but this is what I know. <laughs> these are ones that I bought recently. Um I just bought these the other day actually from the art shop. Um I start with this one, Fabriano. Look, $14.70. Watercolour paper can be very expensive. So when I saw that this one was only $14.70, I was like, yes. Um, I usually buy a four size. Sometimes I buy um, a three size, which is double this, and then cut them. Um, and I usually cut them in half. And a lot of my pieces are only a five size. Beautiful. Listen. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so this is 300 GSM. I use this for uh, gouache, watercolour, pencil drawings, uh, acrylic, whatever I feel like using. This has been really, really good and it's a high quality enough one that I'm happy to sell it at a higher cost knowing that it's going to last a long time, that the artwork is not going to disintegrate in 10 years. Um, this is a one I bought at the same time. It's a little more expensive. I thought I would try it. So it's $35.90. Yeah, $35. And it's basically the same specs. 300 GSM. This one's 100% cotton, whereas this one's only 25%. So 100% cotton, 25% cotton. What does that mean? I don't really know, to be honest. <laughs> it's lovely. This one's really nice. This It, it does feel better to paint with but not really you know it feels better to paint with but it doesn't mean that my artwork's going to be better you know so when when it comes to sketchbooks crappy is great but when it comes to making a final artwork I'm happy to splash out a little bit extra so I don't know what is what is like a $90 pad of watercolour paper like to paint on? I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Mmm, yummy. But um, I don't imagine it being that much.
better quality. Really? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe one day I'll know and I'll let you know. If I said the word no enough. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to watercolor paper, to be honest. I need to do my research there, but also at the same time, I'm just here to have fun. I'm just here to enjoy my life <laughs> and to enjoy painting. So, and you know, I rate it. I still rate it. <laughs> As for painting, acrylic painting uh, on things, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of painting on canvas. I just, I just don't like the texture. It's just not for me. It's not my favorite. Canvases are expensive and that's another reason why I don't use them so much. So they've got a lot, go a lot, not they haven't got a lot going for them when it comes to selling themselves to me. <laughs> what I do like using are wooden boards, um, which I get from my local art supply shops. Here's an example of a wooden board. That's what it's like. These are great, although I have found that they have cracked a little over time. I don't know if you can see, there's like a slight crack through here somewhere, which is a massive bummer, massive bummer. I'm not sure why I need to do some research into that. The rain has started. I don't know if you can hear the rain, but that's nice. So I've been recently trying to look for alternatives to painting on wooden boards and I have recently discovered the clay board here here it is um, and there's a smaller one so as you can see this one is on a in a cube similar to this so it, you've got the edges which I quite like and you can get different textured ones and that sort of thing these have been really fun I've been really really enjoying this this piece is what I I did on the exact same one here. Really smooth to paint on. I still did my layer of ac acrylic uh, paint base instead of gesso, <laughs> just to bring up the texture a little bit because I do love texture. But you can, apparently you can use a lot of different mediums on these. Last time I bought them, they were on special, so stay thrifty <laughs> look for those specials so i think in general to sum it up a lot of the tools i use aren't the most amazing quality or they have been gifted to me or i just use a stick from a garden i don't know <laughs> so i think I, I was lucky because when i was in high school my teachers urged us to try everything and to try it in every different way um, which I, I think the fact that my initial time my initial learning of making art and playing uh, was all about experimenting and all about trial and error and being playful and I think that really really informed a lot of my practice it really means it really it made me not afraid to try new things and I I actually love trying new things I love experimenting if it goes wrong if it explodes if paint gets everywhere if the texture's weird that's fine it's interesting mm, take note okay moving on <laughs> you've learned something so um yeah big thank you to my high school teachers for making sure we tried new things all the time every day in every way we could possibly conceive if we thought that we had come up with every idea in every way to use that technique or that medium they were like keep going keep pushing it keep pushing it and that was good that was a really good challenge that was a really good challenge do you need expensive supplies to make good art no it takes skill, it takes work, it takes practice. That's how you make good art. That's it. That's it. That's the truth. If you see an artist paint a beautiful painting with this one particular paintbrush 
and you go and order that paintbrush and you start painting and it's like doesn't look anything like what that artist has done it's not because of the art tool it's not because of the paintbrush it's because of the years of trial and error determination practice play experimentation all of that kind of stuff definitely having nice quality art supplies makes the experience better um and sometimes it can be easier when the quality is when the quality is really nice you can still make really beautiful art with cheap crappy unconventional art supplies as long as you've got this the technique the skill the passion and you will get there you will you definitely will I I don't necessarily believe in the term talent I think artists are the, the only kind of talent we have is the drive to make stuff to be creative everything else is practice it's that's it that's the bottom line it's practice um and it's the willingness to play and try and yeah go wild have a sketchbook and throw paint at it you know <laughs> yeah we need to be more gentle with ourselves when it comes to trying new materials or if if you if you lash out and you buy something really nice a nice quality art supply and it's not working for you it can feel really terrible but just keep going just try new things and you know what if it doesn't work out sell it give it give it to a friend do a trade you know there's so many possibilities in the end um it's up to you how much you want to spend on your art supplies and on your tools i i actually think that some of the cheaper options do work really well and i do prefer like paint brushes a lot i use a lot of cheap paint brushes <laughs> I literally one day was walking down the street and I found a paintbrush in the gutter and that was one of my favorite paintbrushes that was the one from before with the sticky tape all over it um I literally found it on the in the gutter <laughs> making art is a progress is a process <laughs> making art is a process it gets a lot easier with experience gets a lot easier with practice and time and experimentation you'll find something and you'll have fun the these are just my favorite things and um i'm always trying new things i'm always evolving i'm always open to trying new things and new brands new flowers from the backyard you know uh and i urge you to do the same yeah have fun have fun i want to say a really really big thank you to my patreons without you i don't know how much color would be in the world not that much <laughs> thank you so much for your support thank you thank you if you're not already following patreon and you want to support me support a local artist if you want to support a small business that's the way to go i have over a year's worth of video tutorials art prompts games zines all sorts of things all sorts of goodies if you're interested jump on even just for a month you know now go have some fun it is an order <laughs> okay thank you so much and i will see you next time <laughs> bye